All right, it is time. This is an infinite investment game. I'll talk about alternative investments and collectibles, and this is not particularly investment advice, but hopefully you can take this and make better decisions when buying collectibles. Um, so I want to go into pop culture cards, and I think it's highly speculative. Um, but before I go into that, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with as many people as possible. And if you comment, I will respond back to you. And also, let me know what kind of videos you want me to hear, or you want to hear from me. I'm gonna be working on some UFC stuff. Pretty soon, that's gonna be posted um, at the end of this month, and also going into probably July and August. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about some of these pop culture sets that I see that are like on 137. Um, the first one is 1994 Skybox Disney's The Lion King. So here's the thing. From 86 to 94 is the Junk Wax era sports cards. And in this, not just Baseball, they printed a bunch of stuff, but they decided to come out with a bunch of basketball sets, football sets, and also other fringe sports, NASCAR, all kind of other sports. If there was a sport for it, they tried to come out with cards for it. If there was a movie, they tried to come out with cards for it. If it's a cartoon, they tried to come out with cards for it. If there is some kind of popular or a semi-popular licensing, um, for whatever company, from Star Wars to whatever, they tried to come out with cards for it. Um, because cars were hot, you buy, you sell them at a store, people buy them up. And that's what, that's what happened. Um, so, really around the time from not, anything that came out in like 89 to 94, people pretty much thought it was like some kind of investment, all right? So there's probably warehouses and shelves full of these things. So Lion King, listen, I think Lion King is part of my childhood, but I don't think, I think that's a waste of time to buy boxes of these things. I don't care if it's a $15 billion franchise. Next, 2001, Topps Monster, Inc. <sighs> uh, I think the boxes are $46. I don't think it's worth it. Um, no. Next, 1995 Skybox Toy Story. Right out of Junk Wax era. Um, these boxes are around $90 to $120. Listen, it's speculation. People don't really care about Toy Story. And the future generation, especially if you're going to do this long term, future generations don't care about Toy Story, okay? 1991 Imperial Star Trek. Listen, Star Trek is a big franchise, but honestly, I think people will probably rather buy like graded VHS tapes of, of Star Trek than, than buy cards. Um, boxes, sealed boxes are less than $20, not worth anything. Uh, 1991 Imperial G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. Uh, boxes around $60 sealed. You know, G.I. <laughs> Joe. Bro, G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe. It could have been anything else. We all got duped. Um, these cars aren't really worth much at all. I don't think G.I. Joe is really that big of a franchise anymore. Um, younger generations don't really care. The movie flopped. Next, 1991 Impel Disney Collector's Cards. Manufacturers put collector cards and things such as that um, to get people to want to buy them and speculate and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, these cards these boxes sell for around $150 I know it's Disney and Disney's big but the cards aren't really worth much and I don't see people in the future 10 20 years from now it's like yeah I just love Disney cards L really really rare um, there's Disney video games there's 
people are starting to grade VHS tapes and DVDs, that may be a thing. That that may be more likely over cards. Um, so I, I would say please pass on that. Got these Fortnite to 19, 2019 Panini Fortnite Series 1. All right. You're buying in a Fortnite super early. Super, 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 super early. 2019. Um, if you're doing this long term, if you're flipping, you're speculating, that's fine. The market's going down, but you're kind of flipping on your way down. Um, <laughs> if you want to buy this, I'm, I'm happy for you. If you want to be a collector, that's fine. But it's really like this isn't really an investment. Um, as of now, it's way too early. It's way too early. I don't know if Fortnite 10 or 20 years from now is going to be with sports cards with, you know, Magic Johnson rookie cards or something like that. You know, people are probably still going to want. Right. Um, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, people are going to want, you know, Jim Brown for football. Um, you know, Joe Montana, people are probably still going to want that stuff, you know, Jackie Robinson, Babe Ruth for baseball. People are going to want that stuff. This is 2019. I mean, people, some people say Michael Jordan rookie cards are like not old enough to really be vintage and really be safe. And he's a goat and he's popular, so it is relatively safe, but like, you know, it's still a bit risky in a sense. What do you think 2019 stuff is? Seal mega boxes sell for around $2,500 because they're the only boxes in which you can find a super rare Black Knight Crystal Shard Parallel. Okay. Oh, apparently an ungraded one uh, is sold for $5,000. And if you get it at PSA 10, apparently it's hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Fortnite is, um, I think there could be a place. It's very popular and things such as that. But I think people are confusing the moment of today and what is worth today of what is gonna be worth in the future. Um, and they don't think that for whatever reason, they're buying stuff at all time highs. And maybe it does have value in the future, but it may be 20, 30 years from now. And you may be holding stuff at all time highs with what you got into it with. And it may not go up anymore. And it may go down before it goes up. And that could last not just a couple years, but it could be 10, it could be 20 years. 2001 Panini Harry Potter, the Philosopher's Sticker, Stone Sticker. I was going to buy one of these. Uh, Harry Potter is a really big uh, franchise. Um, I don't think that many people are really into cards and stickers. Oh, uh, And I don't know how many people really want this kind of stuff. And the stuff looks tacky. It doesn't look nice to me. Um, apparently, these boxes sell for around $170. I think that's overpriced. Any Harry Potter cards and stickers is all speculation. Um, there's a lot of other collectible stuff for Harry Potter, like wands and things such as that which I think is more interesting and I think traditional Harry Potter fans would like more likely want. Next, controversial, 1990 Impel Marvel Universe cards. Um, I like Marvel Universe. Um, I don't think the box or the cards are a good investment. Um, I do think there's gonna be a handful of the cards that are going to be worth quite a bit, maybe in the thousands of dollars. Outside of that, uh, if you're trying to invest in this, I think you're a fool. Uh, at one point, they were selling for as much as uh, $6,000 for a box. I, there's someone like Sean from Reserve Investments um, who's been in antiques and collectibles trades, I guess, for over 20 years, 30 years. And um, he knows a lot of distributors and apparently that these boxes are in mass everywhere. Um, so there are a lot of people are sitting on these boxes and they just haven't put them up for sale yet. They're trying to see, wait and see what happens. So yeah, um, same thing. This stuff came out in junk wax era. So also 2001 is a big thing too. So when I, when I mentioned uh, Harry Potter and, and um, Monsters Inc and stuff, that was when Pokemon was a big thing. 
So, and then Pokemon Crash. So people are trying to like, oh, cards are big, so let me make cards. So keep that in mind. And then last but not least is 1977 Top Star Wars. Um, I'm not sure about Star Wars. I think, you know, it could definitely be worth something. Um, apparently a recent box sold for $35,900. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I think it could be a mistake, though. Um, we'll see. It's 1977, so it is pretty old. Um, and I'm bullish on most stuff that's like 1980 and under. But yeah, you could still be making a mistake. Um, just because this thing has been hyped. And you have to have Star Wars collectors want these original cards, and they don't look very nice to me. Um, and I'm really thinking that you're really trying to capitalize off baby boomers and Gen Xers. And as time goes on, these things actually may become less valuable, even though Star Wars is a big franchise. Um, there's a lot of Star Wars collector items and stuff that people's printed and made uh, from 1977 to now. Um, that won't be worth anything. Some things will, but I'm not sure if 1977 stuff is really going to be worth anything. All right, so this is part one. Let me know what you think of this video. Um, comment, subscribe, and then I'm going to make a part two really, really soon.